is Robert Snow, a captain in the Homicide Division of the Indianapolis Police Department. A 35-year veteran of the force, Snow is the prototypical cop. Analytical, no-nonsense, and intensely skeptical. Paranormal, to me, is something you see on TV. It's something that happens on the X-Files, and it happens in movies. It doesn't really happen to real people. It all started when a friend of Captain Snow's dared him to try past life regression therapy. And eventually I ended up saying, yeah, I'd, I'd do it and I'll show you how stupid it is. But then I didn't really want to go do it. I really did. And I kept putting it off and putting it off. At the time, I thought particularly past lives was just a concept to explain bad things. Like, I thought it was just something that people believed in because they didn't want to think they died. First off, I didn't think I could be hypnotized. I thought I was much too strong-willed. I always thought hypnotists could only hypnotize weak-willed people. I'm going to count down from 10 to 1. And with each number that I count, you will slowly become more deeply relaxed. 10, deeper, deeper relaxed. For the first half hour, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing happened. Bob Snow began to talk. There's a globe on the floor. I have a small display case and a file cabinet. He was describing these events and I could hardly believe it. It was so descriptive. And then what struck me most, he said, I'm so lonely. And I began to get choked up when he said that, and because here is a man I didn't think even had any emotions. She walked me through several scenes, and I found, find, eventually found myself in an artist studio. I saw myself painting a portrait. It was a portrait of a hunchback woman. So the, the session lasted nearly an hour. However, okay. the name of the artist was never revealed to Captain Snow. After my regression with Dr. Griffith, I was really confused about what had happened. I mean, it was, the trouble was it was so vivid, so startling, I didn't know what to make of it. His confusion soon morphed into obsession. It started bugging me. It, it really started bugging me really badly. He became more obsessed with it, and it seemed the more obsessed he became with it, the more it disturbed me because it just was out of the ordinary and I mean it was really consuming him finally Captain Bob Snow made a decision when I decided I had to look into this case and solve it to figure out what caused these memories to come up I went back I had made it I'd made an audio tape of my regression and I went back to the audio tape listened to it and I wrote down everything I had said during my regression that could be proved or disproved Snow claims he found 28 provable facts 28 facts all recorded on audio tape. The quality of the tape is extremely poor, but these are actual excerpts from that therapy session. During the session, Bob recalled a piano as well. Also revealed was the number 1917 and the portrait of the hunchback woman. And this is where Captain Bob Snow's journey actually begins. Bob began digging. If he could find the painting, he'd know the name of the artist. I at first thought this would be easy. I thought, how hard could it be to find a painting of a hunchback woman? And I thought, well, it would take a day or two at the most to find it. And as it turned out, it was the unbelievable task. Months of research yielded nothing, and Captain Snow was ready to give up. But it was, it was still tough because it would always in my mind. There would always be this little nagging thought in the back of my mind that 
Where did this come from? Where did this vision come from? Well, I discouraged Bob from revealing this to anyone outside of myself, even to our children, because I was afraid they would think that he'd lost his mind. One year after the past life regression, Bob took a trip to New Orleans, where he wandered into an art gallery and found himself staring at the portrait of the hunchback woman. The name of the artist who painted it? James Carroll Beckwith. No reproductions of that painting exist, and the original is owned by an anonymous collector. This sketch is based on Bob's description. When I found the painting in New Orleans and I found out who the artist was, well then I had, then I had a way to reopen the case. So I came back to Annapolis and began researching the name James Carroll Beckwith to see what I could find on him. Being a captain on the police department, you know, there's a lot of authority. It's a very important position. And uh, with him believing that he's a reincarnated painter, I had a problem with that. And I figured everyone else on the police department would have a problem with it also. Bob pressed on. However, finding information on Carol Beckwith was only slightly easier than finding the portrait of the hunchback woman. Captain Snow started his research at the public library. It was just a teeny, teeny amount that you had to dig for. And I had assumed that I had stumbled across his name sometime in my life when I was doing some kind of reading. But I found there's no way I could have because he, his, the references to him were just very, very few and far between. Captain Snow kept looking. The search eventually led him to the National Academy of Design in New York. There, he found the diaries of James Carroll Beckwith. Turns out, Beckwith kept a diary from his 19th birthday up to the day he died when he was 65. The diary was 17,000 handwritten pages long. Problem being is that Beckwith, he was, he was not a terribly good, he didn't have terribly good penmanship. He did a lot, he scribbled a lot. And I was frightened always to pass over any sentence that I thought it might be a key. Snow obtained copies of the diaries and spent a year going through all 17,000 pages. And what did he discover? confirmation of all 28 facts references to Beckwith's wife Bertha and the sad fact that they couldn't have children Bertha playing piano Beckwith drinking wine a walking stick Beckwith's mother's death a stroke caused by a blood clot he hated painting portraits the final diary entry in 1917 the day before Beckwith died and finally a distinct reference to the infamous hunchback woman Bob Snow began to believe the unbelievable that he was the reincarnation of James Carroll Beckwith. I held out to the, belief, the rational belief that this is not true until the very, very end. Until I got to the part where I found that his mother died of a blood clot. You might know he won awards, you might know he, do a, he died in 1917. It's not going to say his mother died of a blood clot. And that, to me, that was probably the factor that pushed me over to the other side. Before that, I kept saying, no, there's got to be some way you knew this stuff. 